In the 1960s, the curator and theorist Lucy Lippard wrote of the attempt by conceptual artists to escape the object, or to escape a sense of art as necessarily material, due to artists' desire to free the concept of art from institutions such as the art market or the museum and situate it within the ephemeral or the everyday. I work with art as a concept via a theoretical practice, but the return of art to material or object-based definitions in the current moment requires an engagement with its materiality. The theorisation of contemporary art frequently describes art making as a cooperative process, where matter is allowed a sense of agency in the creative process itself. I considered my early decorative painting project a conceptual project, where I set parameters or rules for myself to work within. One of these rules was to apply acrylic paint flatly on smooth, well-primed canvases. I hoped to make the brush stroke and the materiality of the work and the mark of the artist invisible in this way. I'd start from a drawing or a design I'd copied from a source such as a book and then use acrylic paint to render it on the canvas. Within my current work, I've opened my practice to the multitude of materials that are available to artists today. Initially, using fabric and fibres as a medium, I began to start with the material itself to develop the work rather than impose a drawing or a plan on the materials. For example, with number 43 and other works in that series, I began with a rectangle or a square piece of double thickness hessian. I'd stare at the surface of the hessian until a design or a form became apparent within it. In this meditative process, it felt like the material itself spoke to me and suggested the final work's form rather than the other way around. Most often in this series, the form that was suggested was a face, which gave a kind of persona to the square of Hessian and a sense of life to the material itself. For this work, number 44 from 2014, the design that formed was a lower torso with a pair of legs attached. The suggested form became the design for the work and I would either paint in the shapes that I saw, cut them out of the fabric, embroider them or work them in some other way. I've been wanting to create a greater sense of three-dimensionality with my work, something more sculptural than work that hangs flat on a wall. Recently, I've used weaving techniques to create this sense of three-dimensionality. With this work, number 99, Bauhaus Weaving 5, I stretched jute vertically over an old clothes rack, which I used as a makeshift loom. I then wove strips of fabric and leftover wool through the jute to create a design. I made other weavings in this series using the clothes rack, but once they were finished, I removed them from the rack to hang them on the wall. While I was working on this fifth weaving, I realised that the loom gave the work a more sculptural effect, or a sense of the weaving as an object that I'd been aiming for. I came to view the clothes rack as a part of the work. By allowing it to enter the work, I let the object itself suggest its final form to me. So I'm going to try to develop this approach further where I include the frame as part of the work. So I'll use this old painting stretcher as, as a loom. Um, I've attached jute thread to the stretcher because it's very strong and I've wound it quite regularly around <clears throat> the frame vertically to give it the square, to keep the squareness of the frame strong. And then I'll weave the horizontal threads through this. Okay, so now I'll take these strips of leftover fabric that I made before and weave them through the warp. So at the moment I'm thinking at this point I could continue with the blue 
<clears throat> a bit further and have a band there and an equal band of blue down here. And I like the idea of pulling the threads in the middle apart somehow after I've got those bands in place and attaching them to the stretcher so that there's a hole in the middle of the work. So I might aim towards that as I go. Sometimes I'll just continue weaving with a particular fibre until there's no more left. In this way, I feel I'm trusting the process and the fibre itself to decide the work's final form. Working this way means I don't have to make many decisions. By looking at the work as it goes and listening to the materials, the work's final form is created. So it might be interesting to try to weave other materials in rather than just fibre. For example, I've got a strip of an old painting that I took off its stretcher that might weave through here, say, and give an interesting result. Especially if I had other strips from the same painting cut up and it kind of formed an image as I went. Or uh, I could also weave this paper through, perhaps. I could even try weaving something rigid like a piece of wood through. I really like the effect of the wooden stretcher bars being visible and seeing the working threads of the weaving hanging loose. Trusting the materials and including them as part of the final work can be a really generative process and lead to new aesthetic decisions and ideas for future work. <laughs>